And um, thanks to all of you who registered. And, um, you know, it's great to have participation in the eLab. It's great to see your interest. But um, what uh, I'm most, I don't want to sound too uh, sentimental, touched by is that you um, trusted the eLab and John and all to put on a program that's worth not only your time in coming to like an event, but worth um, an entire Friday. You know, I know there's so many things going on with, with school, with assignments, with midterms. This is the middle of midterm season. But, you know, the fact that, that you, you know, assume that we'd be delivering enough uh, value to you that it's worth giving up a, a whole Friday um, is, is something that, that I'm impressed by and hope that we um, live up to. The other thing is, you know, just a, a general thought with this pandemic and COVID, hopefully, you know, the summer is kind of normal and, and this um, fall semester for those that will be here, we're really back to normal with vaccines and everything else. But it, it's so easy to, with all the pressure with, with COVID to kind of crawl into a shell and, and not get out there. So, so thanks for, um, for doing that. And thanks especially to um, you know, Jonathan Lee, the associate director of the eLab, who put all this together. It's like a real luxury and um, privilege for me to be able to just come in and say an address and know that everything was in incredibly capable hands. John brings a lot of experience, um, particularly valuable is his um, technical experience. And a special thanks to our um, speakers, Kevin, James, and Craig as well as um, to the mentors. One um, pitch I'd like to give is, um, we're coming up on the pitch contest, the Pace Pitch Contest in um, April. And you know that's an event I started back in 2004 when I was actually an adjunct at Pace, got a grant from JP Morgan to do this. And it's, it's grown um, quite a bit and um, we've had, uh, people launch a uh, concept in the eLab, pitch it at the pitch contest and go on to be named uh, one of Forbes 30 under 30 with a business valuation of over $100 million just a few years ago. That was Kumesh Arum again from Axern. But um, what I wanted to say here is uh, the three winners of the uh, mobile app design contest, aside from the cash prizes that John mentioned, you also get automatic entry into the pitch contest. You have to you know, apply through the regular process, but you're um, guaranteed uh, entry. We normally have 10 spots. So three of them would be reserved for the winners of this. And if you look at, at past pitch contests, um, many of them have come uh, directly from the uh, mobile app design contest. The thing I, I'd like to tell a, a short story on, I, I saw the theme, you know, solving a customer's problem. And I, I didn't pick that theme, but when I was looking at it, I, um, I thought I'd, I'd sure share a very brief story, um, you know, in real life. So, you know, in, in class, I'm always teaching, you know, the, the customer's problem. We go through customer discovery, you know, the work of Steve Blank and, um, you know, Eric Reese and the Lean Startup. But um, quick story, I don't know if anyone knows who Vin Surf is. But um, if you go to, to Wikipedia, Vinton Gray Surf is, quote, an American internet pioneer and is recognized as one of the, quote, fathers of the internet, sharing um, this title with TCP IP co-developer Bob Kahn. So um, Vint is uh, kind of recognized as the father of the internet. You know, TCP IP is the, um, the backbone of the internet. And he's also been, Google's chief internet evangelist since 2005. So the quick story, I uh, was on the board of the MIT Enterprise Forum of New York City. I was the chairman. I was also on the global board up at MIT. And then I was asked to join the board of disruptive technologists of New York City. And Vint um, agreed to be part of the board and to have a meeting if I ever happen to be down in the DC area where his office, where his Google office is. And um, of course, I, I didn't have a plan to go there, but I said, oh, I'm gonna be there next week if it's possible to meet you. So drove you know five hours each way just to have a, a one hour lunch with him. And 
it was all about you know getting this disruptive technologist off the ground. So we sit down in his office um, with some lunch, and he's like, "How can I help you?" I said, "Well, you know, the problem is, um, you know, in New York now there's so many entrepreneur organizations and there's competition for people, and it's you know hard." I'm going into all that, and he says, "You know," and I I wrote it down. Quote: "It's not what your problem is." It's what problem are you solving for someone else? And the quote continues, what problem are you credibly capable of solving that can deliver a continuous stream of customers? And you know that V8 moment, like I hit myself in the head. I'm like for 20 years at Pace, I've been teaching, you know, it's not about you. It's not about, you always wanted to have a company. It's not about your app. It's about the customer. How can you add value? And you could add value by doing one of two things, solving a problem or creating a benefit. So here I am saying that, you know, for 20 years in front of, you know, hundreds of classes, thousands of students. And when I get a chance to sit down to Vint, I'm talking about my problems. And, you know, I forget that the reason that MIT Enterprise Forum or Disruptive Technologists or Pace University exists is to solve someone else's problem. So the reason I, I emphasize that is if you look at the theme, solving a customer's problem, it seems you know, plainly obvious, like, what are you even stating that for? But I just wanted to show how easy it is to forget that, you know, even as me who, you know, has been, you know, saying that for years, um, often we think about us, you know, oh, it'd be cool to have my own company to develop a neat app to do whatever, but don't forget that focus on the customer. And in, in, in the classes, when we look at this, a broad concept called customer discovery, when you're doing something new, you don't really know who the customer is, what their problems are, how they're going to find it, what features they want, where they'll pay. So you have to get out of the building and talk to customers. You have three main things. You have to figure out who exactly is the customer, what specifically is their problem, and does my app, my you know, product or service actually solve the problem? We'd like to believe it does. Now, I, I just, um, in closing, wanna point out the difference between you know, a startup, a new app, a, a new venture, and an established company like Ford. You know, Ford's been selling cars for over hundred years. They know who the customer is. They know where they shop for cars. They know what features they want in cars. They know, you know, how uh, to price them, how to market them, et cetera. You know, they may do surveys to, to refine some offerings and some features, but they know. But when you're starting brand new, you don't really know that. So what you guys have to do is really try to put yourself in the shoes of the potential customer. And, you know, close your eyes and imagine that what we call archetype customer what are they doing with the app? You know, how are they using it? One that, that quickly comes to mind, someone did an app for tourists in New York City, but when people went around and actually talked to some, they, there were some features that they said, well, they're not there. Like, am I with a family? What is the weather? And the person said, like, what does the weather matter? Well, I want to be able to sort if it's raining or cold outside, I want to sort for indoor type of events versus if, if it's sunny and a, a, a nice day out. I want to search for outdoor events. So you really got to, you know, close your eyes and put your mind in the, um, you know, in the, the state of that archetype customer. So with that, again, I'd like to thank you for um, giving up a Friday. I'd like to thank John for all the work that goes into it and our speakers and mentors for um, willing to, to share their time with you.